Kia's fourth product for India, the Kia Carens is here. Yes, Carens is how it is pronounced because it's an amalgamation of car and renaissance. And a renaissance of sorts is what they're trying to create, a rebirth in the segment. It's not an SUV, it's not an MPV, it is an RV or a recreational vehicle. That's what they're calling it. We'll find out shortly what it is. But if you remember, earlier we had brought you a full walk around of the exterior of the Carens. Now, if you haven't seen that, that means you're not subscribed to the Autocar India channel. So go on, do that right away so you know every time we upload a video and become a part of the almost 2 million strong Autocar India family. Well, if you are subscribed, you would have seen that walk around and today we're here to test drive these cars. Before I dive into that, let's take a quick recap of what it looks like. While Kia say that this is neither an SUV or an MPV, the front does look quite striking and quite like an SUV. Now what's interesting to note is that the car ends is longer, wider and taller than even the Alcazar and the wheelbase is the longest in this segment. In fact, to offer reference, its wheelbase is 30mm longer than the Toyota Innova Crysta. And it has more ground clearance than everything else in the segment except the Alcazar. Well, the dimensions sound impressive, but let's recap the design. Viewed head-on, there is a slim sealed-off section of piano black across the top where one would normally see a grille. It has the 3D texturing that we've seen before in the likes of the Celtos and a chrome bar that runs right across. And this is flanked by the split headlamps that get the LED inspired by the constellations. The tiger nose design element is now seen lower in the chrome that surrounds the large air dam. When you come around to the side, one has to remember that it is a stretched out version of the Celtos platform and up to the front door, it is pretty similar. But thereon, it does take on a more MPV form with the long rear doors and large quarter glass area beyond the C-pillar. To spice it up, there is a chrome garnish on the windows and a smart set of alloys as well as a strong character line that starts at the front headlamp, melds into the doors and then resurfaces at the rear, ending at the wraparound tail lamps. While the alloys look smart, the 16-inch wheels look a little small on the car ends. At the rear, both LED lamps are connected by a fake LED strip and the tailgate is heavily contoured, making it look interesting. Viewed from the dead rear, it really doesn't look like a large car, in fact could be mistaken for a hatch as well. Overall, it is well styled and well proportioned. Now, last time we only got a look at the exterior, this time we're getting a look at the interior up close and I have to say that it is a very nicely, neatly laid out dash. The materials are all very good quality. There is a glossy piano black on the top of the dash which has a unique pattern design. It is dual tone and it is split right through by this chrome look strip as well and of course this AC vent that runs right across. Now it is not entirely a vent, the air vents are at the ends and in the center. They have these really nice looking rocker style vent controls and the same rocker style is used below for the controls for the aircon as well and they have a knurled finish on them. Now this is quality that we're used to seeing from Kia, everything is really top notch. Below it, the aircon controls are all touch enabled and of course you have the central console which has the wireless charging pad behind the gear lever and then you have the buttons which are there for your ventilated seats. Yes, it does have ventilated seats and of course another big one, the sunroof. It does have a sunroof but it has only a single pane one because the air vents sit on the roof at the rear so you can't get the panoramic sunroof. Now, coming back up front, you have this 10.25 inch touchscreen which sits nestled in the dashboard and it has a host of functions and there are a lot of connected features as well. And if you want the full detailed review on that and the 8 speaker Bose sound system, then click on the link on the video now because we have the editor of stuff breaking it all down and telling you about all the features that are there and how the sound system really is. But coming back here, you have the digital dials, you have a steering wheel with all the steering mounted controls. The seats themselves are extremely comfortable. It's a nice leatherette finish with navy blue piping. And that's something that's interesting. The plastics on the top half of the car look almost black, but when viewed in bright sunlight, they are actually a deep shade of navy, which is quite unique. And of course, there's plenty of storage around this cabin. So let's take a look at that. 
The central console has a deep storage with a small utility tray that is removable. There are cooled cup holders as well. And the door pockets can store three large bottles, which have dividers for all three bottles to stay standing up. There is a retractable coin or ticket holder on the driver side of the dash and a cup holder on the passenger side of the dash. There's ample storage spaces at the rear too and we'll talk about them when we move there. And before we get to the back seats, let's recap the feature list. The car ends misses out on some things like the powered front seats, 360 degree camera, blind view camera and the panoramic sunroof that the Alcazar has. But it does have the electrically assisted tumble for the middle row. And while the Alcazar uses a fixed centre console, the six-seat Carenz gets individual armrests. The Carenz is offered as a six-seater or a seven-seater. And we have both here, but let's begin with the captain seats. So let's talk about this really large, wide rear door, which opens out very wide as well. So, you know, access to the middle row is very good ingress is fantastic and the seat itself is at hip height so even for all the people you just kind of slide into the seat and i think that makes it very very comfortable as far as space goes there is plenty there's lots of space to slide this seat front and back so if you don't have rear passengers you can open up loads of leg room as you can see there's tons of space for even a taller person over here. You can stretch your feet out under the seat in front. So that will make it even more comfortable. The floorboard is pretty flat. You have an open space in between in these captain seats. So for women's handbags, that is really, really practical. I've got the smart air purifier in front of me. But the air purifier is very large and it takes up all the space on the back of the passenger seat. And when it is switched on, it is fairly noisy. On the other side, you have this nifty little tray, which has a cup holder and a handy slot where you can actually put your phone or your iPad and watch a movie. You have a small netted area to slot your phone into. You have pockets at the back as well for storage. Another storage space over here, two USB ports, the aircon controls, dedicated aircon vents, which are really nice. These rotary vents really allow you to direct the airflow quite conveniently at the back you have sun blinds too. In other convenience features, there is also a sliding tray under the seat to securely store things. Overall, with the large rear doors, it gets a huge amount of glass area, so it feels very open. And the thing is that this seat reclines. Yep. So you can get extremely comfortable in this back seat. But now, Let's talk about the third row because that's where it normally begins to get pretty cramped. Okay. Now from this side, you can flip and fold it as well, but it is a manual lever. I'm going to come around that side and show it to you because that is a little different. Let me get there. Now on this side, you have a button which is literally one touch nothing else to do, nothing to lift and access to the inside is pretty easy. Now I'm moving over to this side and I'm leaving that seat folded down just so that you can actually get a good look at how much leg room there is in this third row. I have to say that it is pretty substantial and I think one of the best that I've seen so far. I'm five foot four and with this seat in its rearmost position, I've got enough leg room. Um, I've got place to put my feet under the seat and the good thing is that I'm not really sitting very knees up. Apart from that, visibility to the front is really great. Normally, you sit with the seats, you know, literally at nose level so you feel quite hemmed in. But this seat is low and I can see the front so it kind of feels very spacious and airy for me. The seat itself is comfortable. I can recline it more so I can get really comfortable and for someone my height, 5 foot 4, 5 foot 5, you'd have a really comfortable journey even in this back row. You do have cup holders, you have a grab handle and you have dedicated air convents to keep you cool for the whole journey as well. So I have to say that this third row is pretty impressive and the way that the Kia Carenz opens out space on the inside I think is one of its USBs. 
Now while I get behind the wheel, you take a look at the boot space this offers. With three rows up, you could fit in a couple of strollies and it is bigger than the Alcazar and the Ertiga. You can also flip and fold the other rows in various combinations to adjust passenger and boot space. There is also a little hidden parcel and tool tray under the floorboard. It is versatile and spacious, no doubt. If you are wondering where the spare wheel is, it's mounted under the car. Now at the other end, the Kia comes with a variety of engine and gearbox options. You get a 1.5-litre naturally aspirated petrol with 6-speed manual transmission, which has 115 HP and 144 Nm of torque. Then there is a 1.4 turbo petrol, which comes mated to a 6-speed manual and a 7-speed DCT auto. It has 140 HP and 242 Nm of torque. And then there is the turbo diesel, with a 6-speed manual and a 6-speed torque converter. Basically, the engine and gearbox combos and even power figures are the same as the Seltos. But this will be a heavier car. So what difference does that make out on the road? Well, we will tell you soon enough. And for today, we're driving the 1.4 petrol DCT and the 1.5 diesel auto. First up, uh, you've got a wide range of seat adjustments, so it's very easy to get into a comfortable seating position. Uh, you've got a lot of height adjust, so you do get that king of the road feel. Dashboard is nice and flat and there's huge glass areas, so visibility is also very good. And the thing is that the car ends, it just wraps itself around you, so it feels very car-like to drive and it doesn't really feel like a big seven-seater. Now another thing that's really good in the car ends is the way that this infotainment screen is placed on the dashboard. It's angled nicely. So the thing is, there's never really any reflection, even when it's daylight, sun is overhead. So visibility is very good at all times. But let's talk about what the 1.4 petrol DCT feels like out on the road. It's a refined, smooth engine and the power really kicks in at around 1600 RPM. And after that, you have a nice linear acceleration all the way to the red line, which is around 6,000 RPM. The rev counter is a digital readout, and I have to say, I'm not a fan. I like the one which has a needle that goes to the red line any day. It gets off the line easily, and when you are, you know, in city traffic, uh, ambling around, you'll find that it works pretty well uh, as long as you're using a light foot. The thing is that the gearbox, it shifts up really quickly and so when you want a sudden burst of power or a quick overtake, you really have to stomp your foot down and when you do, you'll find that the gearbox doesn't respond quite as quickly as you would like it. It doesn't really like a heavy foot, it's happier when you drive it a little gently. Use a lighter foot and you'll find that the responses are much better. Now when you do drive with a gentler foot at half throttle, you'll find that this 1.4 litre petrol actually responds better. It may not feel as lively as the Seltos, but you never really lack for power and it is good enough. The engine gets up to triple digit speeds easily and gets to the 100 mark in 10.18 seconds. Now, while I was driving alone mostly, we did also get the entire crew into the car to see how the car ends feels fully loaded. I have to say that this 1.4-litre engine coped pretty well. It never felt strained as long as I was driving at a comfortable pace. Even uphill sections were easily done. However, on a very steep climb, a tug on the paddles might be needed. In our performance runs, it came up about 0.36 seconds slower than the Seltos, which shares the same engine and gearbox. Now, I know a lot of you may want to know how it does against the Alcazar, but that has a larger 2-litre engine, so it will be quicker. There are drive modes. Eco is for the really conservative driver. Normal is good enough for your city driving. but. If you're enthusiastic like me and you like sharper responses, then sport is the one that works best. Sport does let you hold a gear longer and it does sharpen the responses, so it makes the car ends feel more responsive. While performance from the engine is good enough, it's the 7-speed DCT that dulls it a bit. 
We will be driving the manual too fairly soon and bring you that review. Now let's not forget the car ends is not aimed at the enthusiastic driver but it's meant more as a family car and the way it rides and handles makes it a very easy car to drive and live with. The steering has a really nice heft to it. But even when you are in the city, it's light enough to maneuver in and out of traffic or when you really want to take a U-turn. It's easy enough. So quite simple as you see and light enough. But yet as you pick up the pace, it really weighs up nicely around corners. It is very well calibrated. And when you are on an open section of road and you are pushing the Karens, you'll be quite surprised by the way that it handles. You can take corners at higher speeds really comfortably. Body control is very good. There's minimal roll and actually it really inspires a lot of confidence. On the safety front, the Kia Karens passes all the required safety norms. Although there is no GN cap rating so far, it does, however, factor in a lot of safety features like six airbags, ESC, vehicle stability management, tyre pressure monitoring system, ABS, rear parking sensors and all-wheel disc brakes as well as downhill brake control for all variants. In addition, there is also an offer, Isofix child anchors, emergency stop signal, seat belt with pretensioners, speed and impact sensing door locks on higher variants. Now what is really good is ride quality. Just don't feel the bad sections of road at all. Low speed, it's got a nice, pliant, supple ride. And even as you pick up the pace, it just stays very flat and composed. And that's really what you want out of a family car, isn't it? Something that gives you a cushy, comfortable ride. And even on those long journeys, keeps the backseat passengers comfortable. Well, it's over to Nikhil now, who's driving the diesel auto. As mentioned, the Karen's diesel runs Hyundai and Kia's familiar 1.5-litre diesel engine and this automatic version features a 6-speed torque converter gearbox. So how does it all come together? A 115 horsepower 1.5-litre diesel engine does sound inadequate for a vehicle that is designed to transport as many as 7 occupants. But as the Alcazar, that is the Karenz's cousin from Hyundai, has proven, this engine gets the job done for the most part. Now you really won't have a problem with performance in town, it gets up to speed quite effectively and what really helps is the 6-speed gearbox which is very smooth in its business. The Karenz cruises well too and makes for a reasonably good long distance vehicle. The thing is this engine feels comfortable transporting about 4 people add any more load and you can tell that it's out of its comfort zone. The Karen's diesel just doesn't give you that reserve of power that you'd get with a larger engine. And it's that reserve of power that you miss the most when you're on an incline with a full house. It's up for easy driving and gentle cruises but not for much more. You can hear more of the engine, there's a grumble from the engine bay and you can also tell that the gearbox is working that much harder to get the most out of this power plant. The Karenz diesel automatic also packs in paddle shifters and it's a nice option to have if you want to shift in a hurry but uh, given the very nature of this engine, you won't be reaching out for them too often. Our preliminary tests reveal the Karen's diesel auto is near identical to the Alcazar diesel auto in terms of performance with a reasonable 12.55 seconds 0 to 100 kph time. The number of greater interest for buyers considering the diesel will be for fuel economy that's yet to be revealed. The 1.5 engine is known to be frugal and so could be the go-to choice for anyone who has a lot of running. In other areas, the Karen's diesel is not all too different from the petrol version. 
The Karen's diesel is set up slightly firmer than the Karen's petrol that Renuka has been driving all morning. And you can feel this, but only in low speed settings where you will feel a bit more surface imperfections in this car's cabin. Things do even out when you go faster. And as on the petrol auto, what you will like here is high speed manners. Stability is good, body movements are well contained, and you'll also like how neat and tidy the Karen's feels in the corners. The Kia Karens goes on sale in February and we expect prices to be in the 14 to 19 lakh rupee ex showroom bracket. Now it's back to Renuka to sum up the Kia Karens. So that is the Kia Karens for you. Hope the review was detailed enough. But to sum it up for you, the Kia Karens is a car that has the good quality that we've come to expect from Kia. It's spacious and that really is its USB, the way it opens up the space on the inside in the third row. That is, I think, one of the best we've seen out there. It's comfortable, it's easy to drive, it comes packed with features. So what it is really is a good recipe for a great family car. The Currents comes with the good quality. Are yaar Bhatias. Can someone please? Ah. Hello, you go that side. 